have so many things going at once, right? Like you have this burning desire to take these guys down, but at the same time, you're also getting, in some cases, extraordinarily close with them and finding things that you bond with, things that you respect about them. Sometimes you love some of these guys, but at the same time, you're also trying to maintain your own real love for, 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 for your family and preserving the job and the oath that you took. And, and, and I can only imagine, I mean, obviously that, that, that sounds fucking insanely stressful, whatever, but I mean, I'm just wondering like, how do you, how do you maintain the real you? Do you maintain the real you? Is it compartmentalization? Like, how does that work? Well, we've hit on this uh, topic a couple of times. Uh, I failed at that. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably my, my biggest regret my biggest humiliation or embarrassment is that I, I, I was in this undercover role for, for so long, for such an extended period of time, like well before and, and beyond the Hells Angels case, that J. Bird Davis, the gun runner, debt collector, hitman, stopped becoming what I did for a living and it started becoming who I was. But, wasn't, but, the, but, but that was necessary, correct? It, 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 in, in, in order to accomplish what you accomplished. Well, and, and, and that was, at least that was my, my defense to myself and to my wife. Yep. I was like, you know what? People that treat this as a gimmick, people that treat what I do as a hobby end up dead. Yep. Right? I have to be all in. I 100% because I'm going to get killed if I'm not. Right. I, I had an argument with my wife. At one point I came home, I'd been away from the house for an extended period of time. I walk in like, like Jay Bird Davis walks into my house, right? Oh, yeah. And she's like, you cannot be gone and come here and treat me and our kids and talk to us like we're street people. Right. And I was like, I'm not a light switch. Right. I can't turn this on mm -hmm. and off. And she's like, well, when you come to this house, you better install a dimmer and <laughs> dial that attitude down or I'll don't come you. back. Straight up. And, and I, would, like, I was super pissed off about that. Mm -hmm. I was like, don't you know I'm saving the mm -hmm, world? Mm -hmm, don't you know mm -hmm. I'm doing all these Ain't amazing things? Yep, yep. And, like, and you're going to give me shit for mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. She was exactly right. She was 100% justified. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's such a, le I, I, I guess, uh, because I know how committed you are to your family. I, I see your relationship and I just in two seconds and I, I, I uh, and what you said about like chasing that eight ball and making up for lost time. It's such a, it's such a, I think a meditation on fatherhood to begin with, because I just know through your book, you know, you talked about all these kids that you would sort of come upon in the field. You would go into these houses where people are doing meth and they're, they're fucking right in front of their kids or selling drugs in front of their kids. There's violence right in front of these kids. And you, you're seeing these, these young girls that are being tossed around. You're thinking of your own daughter. And like, you know, I, I really believe, look, man, for me, in this world, first and foremost, I'm a dad. I'm a father and I'm a husband. That is my primary, that is, that is my, my North Star, right? And there's times where I have to say, you know, and, but the bottom line is, and I think this is true for guys who are locked up. I think this is true for guys who are overseas. I think it's true for guys who, for whatever reason, they walked away. They walked away. I feel like that love, that, that, that bond is always there and you always have a relationship with it. And, and your North Star is how healthy that relationship is. And there, there's always a way. And I guess it, it seems to me like it was always present. Your son gave you that rock. You kept that rock with you. You know, like what, like. I brought, I brought it. Tell you know, that man, story. I mean, that's who you are. I mean, right. it's like clear. And I, I guess like what lessons on fatherhood did this whole chapter in your life teach you? it's 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 gonna sound my answers are gonna sound like like kind of pathetic almost or like like i'm seeking compassion or sympathy and i'm not because Fair all enough. the decisions i made i made Fucking no one made them for me That's i right. own all of them yep but it keeps coming back to this element of uh failure or perceived failure like you talked about like above all you're grounded in your wife and your kids right like i lost that man they weren't the most important thing to me um, like I think inherently, like I'm selfish. That's a very unflattering thing to say about yourself. I made decisions for me, about me, what was good for me, what I wanted to do. And I didn't think about my wife and I didn't think about my kids. You're like along for the ride. And I, and I settled that in my head because I was giving them, I was providing them a comfortable life. They had a nice house. They had food, they had clothes, they went to good schools. 
You know, my wife had a had a good car to drive. They didn't have to worry about money. Like I balanced that by saying, like you're like I'm giving you a comfortable sure. life, but I wasn't giving them presence. Sure, I wasn't giving yeah. them. Yeah, I I wasn't there, right? I was like I was buying my family. Mm-hmm. I was I was paying for my family by giving them things, and I thought like like somehow that was like love or that was a real relationship. And that, I mean, that's, you know, like we're, t- like we're talking to an audience. Like, I don't, like, I don't know the people out there. To. Sure. That's a pretty humiliating thing to say about yourself. But like we said earlier, if I don't, if I, if I'm not, if I don't come clean, yeah. like I'm counterfeit then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and, and also you can't do nothing about nothing until you admit that it's there. I mean, you, you, you'll never address a problem unless you look at it, right? Well, you're, you're like literally when you're like, I was constantly pushing the envelope and I did everything as hard and as fast and as long as I could. And then when the operation was done, like then the fun time came and I partied as hard and as fast and as long as I could. And I, like I pushed, I pushed the envelope every day on everything and, and my relationships. And so, you know, like I retired eight years ago and like the saying, like, uh, it's better to, um, burn out than fade away. Mm. I did both. Mm. I burned out mm. and faded away. Mm. I spend so much time on my couch now, I've been reupholstered twice. <laughs> what is your relationship with the kids like now? It's it's really good. I bet. Um, and my relationship with Gwen is really good. I can see that. Um, but I'll tell you what, of no credit to me, I did every single thing I could direct that. Mm. Um, there was countless times where I should have came home and all my clothes should have been in the front yard and the locks should have been changed. I made a million mistakes with Gwen and my kids, and I'm blessed that they've given me a million and one second chances to fix it. Beautiful. Um, and so I'm trying to take that one chance yep. Yep. and trying to like see if I can finally, like on the back half of my life, maybe get it right, because I spent the first half of my life getting everything wrong. And when you, when you say that you, know, you were like pushing the envelope in all areas, again, do you feel like that was necessary in, in, in order to, you know, especially when you were, is that the rock? It is. Wow. Wow. Can you tell the story of that rock? So during the course of like, so my kids n- never knew me as anything other than an undercover agent. They were born into it. Like Gwen had a chance, man. She knew what I was doing before we got married. So like, like she had the opportunity to say no, the kids never had an opportunity right. to say sure. no. Right. So, like well before the Hells Angels case, through the Hells Angels case, I'd be gone for an extended period of time, you know, smoking and joking, come home. Um, and I did the bare minimum I had to to keep my family functioning. I'd mow the grass, pay the bills, pat the kids on the head, have a cup of coffee with Gwen. Couldn't wait to get back out because I loved being in gangster land. What That's did you where love I about thrived. It? I just loved um, like the risk of it, the challenge of it, how dynamic it was, how dangerous it was. Um, that like pushing the envelope, right? All the time. So every time I'd come home and then get ready to leave, my son, who was little at time, like eight, 10, run out in the yard and say, dad, don't leave yet. Like I got something for you. And he'd come and he'd bring me a rock out of the yard. And hundreds of times I had these rocks. I, I kept, I kept Jackie's rocks. I kept one in my pocket at all times. I had them in the saddlebags of my motorcycle, my undercover car, my undercover house, these good luck charms, right? This kid was giving me these good luck charms. Um, I started handing them out to my partners on the task force. I was like, oh, I don't wow. know like what kind of blessing or charm this kid is putting Trust on, me on this. but like <laughs> the violence is swirling around us. Yeah. Eight or 10 murders took place during that case, like oh. all around us, friends of mine, people that I was working on. I was like, like, please hang on to this rock, right? So the last big operation, we're getting ready to kind of wrap the case up and we're going to go fake this murder, right? And I'm getting ready to leave. And I tell Jackie, like, I'm almost done. And don't leave yet, Dad, don't leave yet. And he brings me this rock, right? And 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 it's this rock. It's the, the the, the one that I keep with me. And he says, I've been saving this one for you. It's special. It's shaped like a heart. And so like, I'm a 40 year old dad and I'm trying to comfort like this 10 year old boy. And I said, all the things that I have been neglecting with you, I'm gonna fix. 
I'm going to get done with this and I'm going to come home and we're going to play catch and we're going to ride bikes and we're going to wrestle and we're going to swim and go to the movies. Right? And I said, it's all because of your rocks, dude. These good luck charms. And I'm like, they work so good. I've been giving them to all my partners. And this little boy standing on my driveway and tears start running down his cheeks. He's standing there, no shirt, no shoes. And he's like, those were not good luck charms and you shouldn't have given them to anybody. They were just for you. They were only for you, dad. And so like, I'm like trying to figure out like for years, I thought he'd been giving me good luck charms. And he's like, that's for you to put in your pocket. And every time you think someone's gonna hurt you, you could put your hand in there and touch it. And that would be like me being there to help you fight them. Wow. And that was like, that was the worst day and the best day mm. of my life. Mm. The worst day is that a 10 year old boy had to teach his 40 year old father what my job was. Mm. The best day was that my 10 year old son taught me what my job was. Mm. Um, and so, man, I put a huge amount of battle damage on my family. That's what I did to my kids. Yeah. All because what? Because I wanted to be Donnie Brasco part two? Mm. 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 For what? Mm. And then you leave, no one cares, no one remembers you, no one remembers the cases, you know, you like you, 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 you retire, and the next day, like the people on your task force are arguing over the stapler on your desk, who gets it? That's how, that's how important you are. <laughs>